Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecturer in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short videos on problem solving techniques. In video number 10, we're going to take a look at project network diagrams. So first off, what is a project network diagram? Well, it's a graphical representation of a project schedule that shows the logical relationships and sequencing of activities that make up a project. This type of diagram is useful for planning, tracking and controlling any project from start to finish. And for this reason, it's a very popular tool, of course, with project managers, but also people like business analysts and other types of analysts will also make use of project network diagrams. A project network diagram is a technique for showing activity sequencing. It gives us a schematic display of the logical relationships among or sequencing of project activities. So every project can be broken down into activities. On our diagram here we have six activities. These activities are labeled from A to F and they represent the arrows uh, that are on the diagram here. So each arrow in this case represents an activity and each node at the beginning of the arrow, uh, let's take a look at activity A, has node number one at the start of the arrow and node number two at the end of the arrow. Um, this tells us the sequence of activity. So A is followed by B, which in turn is followed by C, which in turn is followed by F. We can read that from this diagram. Similarly, there's another path through this diagram where A can be followed by activity D, which is followed in turn by E, and finally followed by F. So this project network diagram, at a glance, uh, lets us see what the sequence of activities through this project are. So when should you use a project network diagram? Well, they're very useful tools when you are planning a new process or if you're involved in improving an existing process. For new processes, you will have to determine the logical sequence of activities for any solution that you propose. Uh, and we do this because activities often cause scheduling problems on projects. Uh, for example, if you have two activities requiring the same resource, they cannot be completed at the same time. So we want to use a project network diagram when we are planning, scheduling or controlling a new program or product development effort. These types of diagrams can help us document and track a complex project, uh, whether it's an existing or planned project, and they can also help us designate what's called a critical path, which I'll come back to in a few moments, and show other interrelationships between activities. We can also use these network diagrams to ensure time and resource management, and they can help us reduce project costs through uh, coordination and communication. So, if we can do all of this with something as simple as a project network diagram, we will indeed have quite a powerful tool um, to help us with our project, uh, which hopefully will get us to a solution to solve our problems. So how do you draw a project network diagram? Well, the method I have chosen here is the activity on arrow or AOA method. There are other methods, but I'm going to uh, just use this one here. And the reason why I'm using this one is a very simple technique. We just need two symbols. We need an arrow, first of all, which represents the activity, and we need a circle, which we call a node, to represent an event. So on the simple diagram at the very bottom of the screen here, we have one activity, which is called activity A. So that's put on the arrow, and hence the name, activity on arrow. And um, event number one represents the start of activity A, and that's in the node on the left-hand side, and event number two on the right-hand side, this represents the end of activity A. So the numbers in our circles are event numbers. So let's take a look at a step-by-step -step procedure for creating our project network diagram. Well, first step is that we find all of the activities that start at node number one. So in our simple example here, we've got just one activity, that's activity A, and that starts at node number one. So we draw that coming out of node number one. And step number two, then we draw their finished nodes uh, and draw arrows between node number one and those finished nodes. So you can see here, we have one arrow going from node number one to the next node, which is node number two. And then we put the activity letter, in A in this case, and duration, uh, one, uh, let's say that's one day in this case, um, on the diagram, um, to, uh, for whatever the activity is, we put the activity name and its duration on the arrow. Sometimes you'll see this, uh, as I've shown here, with the activity on top and the duration on the bottom, but uh, often you'll also see uh, uh, written as activity A equals one um, or something similar. Um, the good idea here is to make sure that it is simple and that you don't get too cluttered with too many words and names, particularly if an activity has a long name, you might be better off using a letter or a code to represent that activity. So continue drawing uh, the network diagram, usually working from left to right. And there's two very important things that you should watch out for when you're drawing a project network diagram. You should look for bursts and merges. 
A burst occurs when a single node is followed by two or more activities. So you can see in our diagram here that node number two is followed by two activities. They are activities B and activities D. So they, this represents a burst. And the second thing you should look out for is a merge, which is the opposite of a burst and a burst. And a merge occurs when two or more nodes precede a single node. So you can see in our diagram here that node number five is preceded by activities C and E. Now these are very, very important for people to watch out for and to understand um, because this is the source of most errors um, in my classes, project management classes. Uh, these are the areas where students make the most mistakes and also in business, um, project managers have to really, really watch out for the bursts and merges in their project network diagram because this too can lead to errors when they are being drawn. So this um, project network diagram here is quite simple to read, therefore. Um, there are two paths through this diagram, um, activity A followed by activity B followed by C and then followed by F, so that's one path. Activity A followed by D and then E and then F, that's a second path. And we can see the sequence of activities here. So for example, we can see that activity C um, must follow activity B. In fact, activity C can't start until B is complete. Um, activity F can't start until both activities C and E are complete. If one of them is complete, it still can start according to this diagram. So let's now take a look at an example. Um, this table here is typical of a table I would give to students uh, when uh, asking them to draw a project network diagram. It's very simple, we've got three columns here. We list our activities, we've got nine activities in this example here, labelled from A to uh, I. Then we have dependencies in the centre, and this is where we show wh which activity is dependent on other activities being complete. And on the third and, and rightmost column we have the duration, so we just put in the numbers here. In my example here I'm going to use the duration of days. Uh, so f the no duration of four represents um, this activity will take four days to complete. So let's quickly look at this table. Activity A is um, not dependent on activity, so we just leave that blank or just put in a little dash, and it has a duration of four days. Activity B is not dependent on activity any other activity, and it has a duration of three days. When we come to activity, activity C in this example, we can see that activity C is dependent on A being complete, and it has a duration of two days. We can also see that activity D is also dependent on A being complete and it has a duration of five days. So our table and uh, data for the diagram is getting a little bit more complicated here. Activity E is dependent on B being complete, activity F is dependent on C being complete, G is dependent on D and H is dependent on E being complete. Finally, activity I is dependent on activities F, G and H being complete. So Straight away, I can see that my diagram here is going to have some bursts and merges on it. The clue to this is that in the dependency column, you can see, for example, activity A listed twice, and down at the bottom, activities F, G, and H, all dependent on activity I being complete. So I know before I draw my diagram that I'm going to require bursts and merges. So on this picture here, down in the bottom right hand corner, I have a small version of the table that we have just seen with the activities, uh, dependencies and durations listed, so hopefully you can see those um, in, in, in the table. And in my diagram, I have drawn a project network diagram to represent um, this particular table here. So let's take a look at the first activity. So I'm going to look at activities A and B together because um, they can start at node number one because they are not dependent on any other activity being complete. Um, and I draw my finished nodes, node number two and node number three, to represent the ends of activities A and B. I continue on from left to right. I can see that I've got a burst at, after node one, a burst after node two. I've got a merge at node number seven. And this um, allows me to see that my last activity, I, which follows F, G, and H, as hinted on the table, uh, is the last activity on my diagram. So it might be worth your while to pause the video at this stage to try and understand the link between the table and the diagram on the left hand side here. Finally, um, the critical path through this diagram, um, you can see that there are three possible paths here and the longest path highlighted in red takes 14 days. The other two paths take 12 and 9 days respectively and the critical path through this project is 14 days therefore the overall duration of the project is 14 days. If you found this um, tool you, a useful tool to help you in your problem solving techniques, uh, you will write, read about this with many more examples from my new book, An Introduction to Business Systems Analysis, published by the Liffey Press and available through Amazon. 
Thank you for your attention in watching this video. I hope you found it useful.